This is Real Life with Deb Waterbury, a real show for real people with real issues. And now, here's your host, Dr. Deb Waterbury. Welcome to this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. We are in the middle of a grief series and a series on grief. I think that might be a better way of putting it. And what we've been doing is talking about different aspects of grief and then how we can deal with that as Christians and as believers. Well, when I had my my radio show uh, last year, year or so ago, I did a series as well on handling grief. And I thought of my good friend, Sally Knipe, who has written a wonderful book called The Do's and Don'ts of Grief. And again, her last name is Knipe, K-N-I-P-E. And I'll warn you, um, after I did that show, I had so many people that wanted this book. So we will make sure that you have the information for how to get the do's and don'ts of grief, both on the YouTube channel under information, and then we'll mention it too at the end. So um, Sally though, because we've talked about this on the show and before on the radio show, there are just so many aspects of grief and so many ways you can grieve. I mean, right. you can just grieve the loss of a relationship. Oh, absolutely. Whereas, um, whereas yours, you grieve in the loss of a husband and yeah. it was a, it was a death that's just, you, then you dealt with, you're a Bible study writer, you've written lots and lots of studies that you were just sharing with me. So I guess the Lord then just moved you into wanting to help other people with how you were dealing with your grief. Is that right? That's exactly right, Deb. Um, I just, when Jim died, I can't, you know, we'd been married 53 years. He was the love of my life. I met him when I was 15. Oh. But still, when he died, it was fairly sudden. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a long illness. And it just, you know, it just threw me into a spiral of grief that um, I just had, of course, never experienced. Right. And I, it wasn't long afterwards that I just felt a very strong nudge from the Holy Spirit mm. that said, write a book on all that you're learning because I learned so many practical things Mm. as well as spiritual things. And um, I just wanted to help anyone that's gone through any kind of loss or grief to be ready. And it may not be the death of a spouse. It may be um, a divorce. Yes. Or like you said, some of my things wouldn't apply so much to other types of loss, but still I wanted to help however I could in very practical ways, uh, men and women going through this so that the journey would be a little bit easier. Yes. Well, I mean, it's, and it's going to be hard. You know, I just, I had a very, very close friend whose um, daughter just passed away Mm -hmm. and she and I were talking on the phone and, um, and I was, and she, you know, she's dealing with this whole asking God, why, why didn't you heal her? Why did you take her? Um, and, and, and then, then feeling, I, cause she's a doer, you know, a lot yeah. of us women are doers. And right. so she's, she's trying to figure out what do I need to do to get through this? Yes. And, and I told her, I said, honey, you're going to feel this. You yeah. just lost your daughter. Yeah. That's one of the most devastating things I can imagine any mother going through. Right. You're going to have to feel it. Yes. So there's no way you're going to lose someone. And, and then just get over it. No. there You have to feel every aspect of that. You do, and that's important for the actual healing process. I, I spend a, a chapter on the whys and the what ifs. Mm-hmm. I spend a chapter on um, basically taking your own pulse. I tend, uh, I went through a very deep depression many, many years ago. And so I was concerned if I would fall into that deep depression again. Mm. So I had f- close, dear friends and family members keep a pulse on me mm-hmm. so that um, if they saw me falling into that hole too deeply, yes. which you do fall into a hole. Yes, of um, course. And you have to expect that. <laughs> you have to. And you have to be okay with that. I think yeah, that you have to accept it. Yeah. Yes. And some people mm. are not, not even okay with that. Did you find that to be that oh. they really didn't understand maybe why you were still feeling grief after a period of time? Uh, you know, I, I go into the fact that you own your grief. Mm. Your grief is personal. I learned that um, no one can tell you how long you should grieve or how. Mm. And they can't... Um, one dear friend took me to lunch not long after Jim died, and she said that she thought... Um, it was about time that I moved on because God had things for me. And I left that restaurant mm. so sad. I guess. And even a little angry. Mm-hmm. And I thought, tuck it away. Um, 
this is not what you say to someone. No. But I think of my dear daughter-in-law, who is very close to my husband. And after Jim died, she's normally right there helping. She's a servant. She didn't come around. And I was like, why? What is going on? And then Deb, my daughter-in-law, told my, my daughter that she couldn't come in the house without her father-in-law there. Aww. They were so close. Aww. So I had to give her permission to grieve her way. Right. I had to remember that my children and close friends were grieving. Mm. And one close friend said, I, I can't be with you because it reminds them that this will happen down the road to one of them. Oh, wow. But, um, Gosh, so that's stuff you don't think about. You don't think about it. And so you need to be so sensitive and let, and, and just own your own grief. I, I wrote a chapter as silly as it sounds on name your day. And when I get up and somebody say, how are you? I was honest. Oh, good. Dr. Deb, good. I was gut honest. <laughs> and some days I'm saying, I'm having an angry day. And one day my daughter said, why, who are you angry at? I said, your dad. He left me with all these things to decide yes. and a house to take care of and a yard and things that he always did. And right. all the decisions were mine now. And I, so I would name my day mm. and I, I didn't fake it. I didn't fake my pain at I all. I think that's so wise. I know, so, you know, and I, I, that's wise that you knew it in it. Yeah. I mean, was that because uh, honestly, I can see where maybe you might get to the end of, of this, of the, you know, the time period and then go, okay, I, I wish I'd have done this or, or I see where I could have done this. But you, the Lord really gave you serious discernment and wisdom in the midst of your grief yes. to do it in a way that, and I believe it was so that you could help other people. Oh, that was my main goal because who would write a book? Five months after your husband of 53 years died. That's kind of crazy. Was that <laughs> it hard? is crazy. Oh gosh, I got the uh, the keyboard wet a lot. Yes. Uh, my tears, but it was therapeutic because I am a writer, mm -hmm. and um, so it was very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And um, so yes, I wrote it and published it within the first year mm -hmm. of Jim's death. Mm -hmm. Plus go crazy making all the other decisions of the house. Of my course. my four children, bless their hearts, said, you know, we really appreciate dad now and, and it takes a village to raise our mother. But <laughs> you know, what woman, you should know about your irrigation, Dr. Deb, yes. and you should know about your finances oh, and yeah. how to take care of the pool. But really, my husband spoiled me. I, and I, I think of that often. My <laughs> Jeff does everything. I mean, he does. I don't I, We've never even called a handyman. I, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would go Jim broke just same. calling people to fix stuff. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, I just wrote practical things. I, I wrote one chapter that has really helped so many uh, women and men. I said, know your household. I mean, before tragedy would hit, whether a death or a divorce or whatever, do you know your finances? Do you know whether you have a life insurance policy? Do you know where your passwords are? How do you bank? Oh. Um, one woman said, um, I went right home and changed all my utility bills to or Jim or uh, Sally, where Jim had, for some reason, years ago, when we first got all these accounts, he put James Knight. Well, I call CenturyLink about a problem and I couldn't get one ounce of information out of it. Because them. you're not James Because Knight. I am not, you know, the, the um, Gosh, this privacy is, thing this is, is stuff ridiculous. stuff you don't think about. You don't. And she, my friend said I went right home, called every utility and put it in both of our names. That's so smart. Car, our car deeds were also um, in Jim's name. Mm -hmm. And so in the first year, I sold a travel trailer. I sold two cars. I bought a new car. I... I did all that, but oh my, our house deed was in his name. So mm. I had to go through the hassle of changing that. Anything you can learn and know ahead of time, do mm -hmm. it because grief, number one, it's exhausting. Mm. It's an exhausting journey. Number two, you don't think straight. And already, you know, if you're 70 years old, you don't think straight, <laughs> but you really don't think straight. <laughs> grief throws you into a state of confusion. Yes and you're anxious and believe me to have to walk through all this when it you know we had a lot of it done but there was a lot we could have done and to there's be ready and you're, for this. And that's so that's so i can imagine that's so true that your you grief does 
take every ounce of your brain. Oh, it does. It does. Um, and, and then some. <laughs> and then some, mm-hmm. yes. And and we, um, Bobby Rill, who's on the show as well, to talk about grief, um, and she, as a counselor, it's one of the things that she says, right. is that um, it is it is all-encompassing. Right. So to have these kinds of things that you're mentioning that have to have attention when you're in the midst of grief, which is one again one of the things that I think was so helpful with this book because it is so practical. Yeah, it really is so much about what do you practically do. So, um, I know you've named a couple. What is what do you think if someone has lost? It doesn't have to. It can be a divorce, like as oh, you said. Absolutely, any um, loss, any kind of loss at all. What do you? What would your number one piece of advice be? Well, spiritually have your faith in place. Mm. I I realize that you need to know God before you need God. Mm. And when the last of my house guests left after his funeral, um, I can remember laying my head on my kitchen counter and sobbing a sob that I have never done. Mm. And God at that moment said to me, okay, now are you gonna believe and walk in everything that you already know, his promises, his word, are you going to walk your faith? Mm. And at that point, through sobbing, sobbing tears, I said, I have nothing else. Yes, Lord, yes. I could have easily gone to bed, mm-hmm. pulled the sheets up and stayed there. Seriously, mm-hmm. that's how desperate I felt. Oh, yes. But I didn't. I remember going into his office and just start cleaning and, and taking the sheets where guests had stayed. And I can attest to the fact that God has been faithful. Mm from sending me someone to help me when I botched my computer to um, a man to come and help me with gardening once a month. I mean, God met me every step of the way. So first, know God before Mm, you need God. Very good. And then know that he is 100% um, faithful. Mm. And I'm on Facebook and and so many people that are grieving just say, um, I have no hope. Mm-hmm. And you will have no hope. Right. You and, have no hope. And that's okay. It is. It really is okay to feel that. Yes. Um, but but it, it, we it, have as Christians, that's we right. have a hope. The eternal we hope. We have hope. And you know, you're ta- what you're talking about is something that is just so fundamentally spiritual. Yep. Know what you know, even if you don't feel it. Yes. And lean on it. You, you at that point, no longer, it's just not something you've recited to other people mm. in their grief. Right. It's, um, which you shouldn't. Mm. But... <laughs> But know that um, he is trustworthy. I remember one day sitting there. I was, I'm was i so good at botching up my computer. And then I would just go, jam. And uh, this day I said, I can't believe I did this again. You know, I, And I said, Lord, send someone today without me asking. And that night my son and daughter-in-law came over and she said, Mom, I can fix it. So, I mean, oh, God was there right. in everything right. for me. So I would say, have your faith in place and then know, know the affairs of your home. Yes. I th- and that's so practical. Yes, I mean, that it is, is so practical, especially for women Yes, to remember. And you know, men too, I think about, you're saying that and I'm thinking, you know, even though Jeff takes care of all of the house, I do all the finances. Yes. So if something happened to me, I don't think he'd know where all the passwords are. So yes. when you said that, I was like, I don't think Jeff would even know. And I yeah. have passwords for everything and I take I care of everything. So <laughs> he would be hard pressed to figure out how to get into any of those accounts. Exactly. Yeah, and these are um, we have to think about. It, it is. It is. So, um, yeah. And just, um, I'm, I'm almost two years now mm-hmm. since his death. And, um, I have learned that there's life after loss and you don't want to go on, but I have seven grand, I have four kids and seven grandkids and almost six grades. And there is many, many reasons for me. I mentor a lot of women and I love to speak before groups. And I just found out, yes, there is purpose after Amen. loss, mm. not right away. You're you're you getting heal. up and you're, you're, you know, I, I speak about uh, getting through your day. Mm-hmm. And one day it was really bad. I mean, I, I was really suffering some deep depression and my grief was terrible. I got ready and what did I do? I drove across town to Hobby Lobby, my happy place. <laughs> and um, I got through that day. I talk yes. about survival mode. Mm-hmm. You're surviving and you do everything you can to survive each day Very good. until the pain. That lessens. is so, because it will. 
It will but lessen. But you've got to get through those days. You have to get through them. And again, through. that's one of the things that is so wonderful about what you've written in this book is because it does give you just do this, don't do this, do this, right. don't do this. Right. Um, it is just so practical, so easily, it's easy to read, easy Thank to follow, and easy to see. Yes. And, and there are so many complicated things out there, books out there about grief. It's so nice to have one that just says, look it. You're going to feel it. So this is what you should do, and this is what you shouldn't do. Right. I, that's what I love about this. So right. the book is called The Do's and Don'ts of Griefs by of Grief by Sally Knipe, and that's K-N-I-P-E. So Sally, where can they get the book? The book can be um, had on Amazon, mm -hmm. and then if you live in Tucson, um, it's at Barnes & Noble, and it's at Gospel Supplies. Very good. Excellent. Yes. And we're going to have how you can get in touch with Sally on, um, on the YouTube, you'll be able to look right straight down there and see it. Um, and then obviously you'll be able to get in touch with her through that. So again, the do's and don'ts of grief. You know, grief is, um, it's a process. Yes, and it, it is. is. It's a journey. You're, you're human. Hard one. <laughs> and exactly, you've lost something. We yes. grieve because we've lost something. Yes. So don't find, don't look for shortcuts. There are, bet, you know, you give some practical things, there, but there are no shortcuts. You're right. still going to have to move through You have it. to walk through the stages. Yes, but you, but you know that God is faithful. Yes. And you stay your mind on the things that you know, even when yes. your heart is broken. Yes. Um, and, and you make such a great point, Sally. You can't do that after the fact. No. You need to, you need to get in your word now. You right. need to get to know your God now. You get your, to know your Savior now. Yes, because loss foundation. is coming for all of us. Oh, everybody we will feel lost. We are all going to feel lost. Yes. And so the way you deal with it and the, and the hope and the joy that you can find even amidst it, or at least the ability to get through it, right. will be greatly determined by what you do beforehand. Exactly. By what you do in the first part. Exactly. Thank you so much, Sally. No, you're welcome. Thank you guys Thank you. for being with us today. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, give us a, uh, you can go to our website, debwaterbury.com, and we have a prayer site there. You can get in touch with Sally. We've got that information below. We, we pray for you, pray for, we, as we know, you pray for us. And um, we're just looking forward to everything that God has to do. See you later. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Real Life with Deb Waterbury. I hope it's been a blessing to you as much as it was to me. You know, if you want any of my books or information on articles or any of my speaking engagements, you can go to my website at debwaterberry.com. God bless you.